The information in this video is provided for informational and educational purposes only. Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of the Morale Monologue. My name is Michael Morale. Over the past couple of years, I've been doing numerous videos regarding Spinraza, FRISD, and Zolgensma, along with numerous videos regarding Scholar Rock's potential treatment, Epidogromab. You also know that I work for an outstanding company called BioNews, and BioNews is the parent company of SMA News Today. When I started with BioNews, I began as a YouTube developer and a podcaster, and after being hired full-time in August 2018, I'm honored to work with some incredibly talented people who help not only the SMA community, but also a myriad of other rare disease communities. Before starting with BioNews, I started chronicling my own journey when I started Spinraza in September 2017. The videos that I do for my personal YouTube channel, SMA Journey 51, along with the videos that I do for the SMA News Today YouTube channel, have given me a voice within the SMA community. During these videos, we sometimes receive questions, so I thought it would be good to do a video where I answer some of these questions. Before I begin, please understand that I'm only going to be sharing the questions that were posted publicly beneath the videos themselves. I sometimes receive questions in my private email from viewers, but I will not be sharing these questions with you because I've always guaranteed the anonymity of anyone sharing a private email question. I'm going to be sharing five questions with you along with the screenshots of these particular questions. Some of these questions were posted beneath the video that I did for SMA News Today, and some of these questions were posted beneath the videos that I did for my own YouTube channel, SMA Journey 51. Okay, so let's get started. Question number one came from a video that I did for the SMA News Today YouTube channel, where I discussed my choice to switch back to Spinraza after starting at RISD. After taking Spinraza for over three years, I made the decision to switch to Evrisd because it was an at-home oral treatment. Unfortunately, Evrisd caused me some gastrointestinal issues, and while I tried my best to allow my body to adjust, unfortunately, it didn't, so I had to switch back to Spinraza. This is a two-part question that I recently answered. Part 1. How much does Evrisd cost, and can it be shipped outside of the United States? My answer was that if RISD is based on the weight of the person that will be taking it, and the user told me that their son was three years old. I told them that the cost of this treatment is approximately $340,000 per year, and this number was based on information that I had seen, but I did tell them that Roche and Genentech had programs that could help pay for this treatment. With regards to their question as to whether or not RISD could be shipped outside of the U.S., my response to them was that I really couldn't answer this question. I told them that I knew that if RISD had been approved and was available in other countries, but I suggested that they speak to their child's neurologist or pediatrician and ask them to find out whether or not it's available where they live. Part 2. A user asked if Spinraza was better than RISD. My answer was that in no way was I saying Spinraza was better than RISD. They are both excellent treatments. It's just that if RISD was causing me some gastrointestinal issues, and that was the reason why I switched back to Spinraza. Question number two came from a video that I did for the SMA News Today YouTube channel, where I discussed the reality of Spinraza and of RISD. This was more of a comment than it was a question, but the user told me that they were thankful for science. I responded to them and told them that we should all be thankful for science, technology, and the medical fields because we have progressed so far in such a short amount of time. I reminded them that those of us with SMA had nothing six or seven years ago, and now we all see so many new treatments that are either currently available or that will be available in the coming years. Question number three came from a video that I did for the SMA News Today YouTube channel where I discussed how Scholar Rock currently received a U.S. patent for epidogromab. The viewer asked a two-part question. Question number one was where they asked if epidogromab was good. I told them that this would be the first muscle-targeted therapy for those of us with SMA, if and when it's approved by the FDA, which I told them that I thought it would be, that 
it would also be the first combination therapy that would be used in conjunction with spinrosa. I told him that this muscle-targeted therapy would be extremely beneficial for those of us with SMA because we would be finally getting something that would address the concerns regarding building muscle strength and muscle mass, something that Spinraza and Evrisd don't do. Question number two was regarding the cost details of Epidogromab. I responded to this question by telling them that at the present time, we don't have any cost numbers with regards to Epidogromab, and I said that we probably wouldn't see any of these numbers regarding the cost of this potential treatment until they move closer towards FDA approval. I said that in my opinion, the cost of this treatment would be moderately priced due to the fact that it would be used in conjunction with Spinraza. But I reminded them that this was only my opinion. I also stated that as we learn more with regards to the cost, we would be sure to keep everyone updated. Question number four came from a video that I did for my personal YouTube channel, SMA Journey 51, where I discussed how Scholar Rock was going to be starting a pivotal phase three trial for Epidogromab. The viewer asked whether or not Epidogromab, formerly known as SRK015, could also be used as a treatment for limb girdle muscular dystrophy, also known as LGMD. I told the viewer that I wasn't sure as to the answer to this particular question, I said that I knew that there were a lot of similarities between muscular dystrophy and spinal muscular atrophy, but I haven't seen any information regarding whether or not epidogramab could or even would be used as a potential treatment for LGMD. I said that as more information became available, I would be sure to let everyone know as to whether or not some of these SMA treatments would have a beneficial effect for those who suffer from muscular dystrophy. And my hopes and prayers are that some of these SMA treatments can be used with patients who suffer from MD. I also said that they should also speak to their neurologist and ask them if they had heard anything with regards to their questions. Question number five came from a video that I did for my personal YouTube channel, SMA Journey 51, where I discussed how Scholar Rock had currently received a U.S. patent for Epidogramab. The viewer wanted to know why it would be beneficial to try to get more protein from the SMN2 gene when gene therapy can fix the problems in the SMN1 gene. Other than Price, they had not heard a truly good explanation why all SMA patients were not receiving Zolgensma. My response back to them was that while Zolgensma is classified as a gene replacement therapy, at the present time, it's only available for infants and toddlers two years of age or younger. It can only be given through an intravenous or IV infusion, and it is not currently available to individuals over two years of age because it's unable to pass through the blood-brain barrier. I stated that they are currently in a clinical trial where they're testing Zolgensma so that it can be administered through an intrathecal injection similar to Spinraza. I also made the point that Zolgensma can only be given once because if it's given more than once, the body will start to build antibodies against it. I gave the example of the flu. When you receive the flu shot, your body automatically starts building antibodies to help fight this illness. And if Zolgensma was given repeatedly, the body would start to recognize it as something that it needed to fight against. Thus, the body would start producing antibodies. One last point that I made was that those of us with SMA that are older have excessive amounts of myostatin in our bodies. And myostatin is a growth inhibitor that's keeping us from building muscle mass and muscle strength. And that's one of the reasons why everyone within the SMA community is so excited about epidogramab. I hope you found this video helpful, and I hope that it answered some of the questions that you may have had as well. I always welcome questions to any videos that I do, whether it be for the SMA News Today YouTube channel or my own personal channel, SMA Journey 51. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the SMA News Today YouTube channel. Remember, when you do subscribe to the channel, be sure to click on the bell icon. That way you'll be notified of any new videos that we produce. Those of us at SMA News Today hope all of you have had a great day and I ask that you do something for yourself this upcoming week that's gonna make you a better person. Until next time, take care of yourself and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.